Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Design Essentials and uh, today we will be looking at the top most powerful Adobe XD plugins of this month which is uh, July of 2019 and um, I'll be doing one of these every month so stay tuned for that. Uh, so without further ado, let's just get started with the video. Okay, before we get started with the first plugin, after the video finishes, write in the comments which was your favorite or which is the most interesting plugin out of all of these. So let's just get started. Okay, so uh, the first plugin that we're going to look at is Android Artboard. And uh, as you know, in Adobe XD, if I want, say, um, you know, an artboard and I go to these artboards, there are only iPhones and a default Android mobile. So there, there, there are no devices as such. You know, it just uh, applies a default Android mobile and that's it. So if you really want to apply different devices like Pixel and Samsung phones, you can go ahead and download this Android Artboard plugin and it supports Google Pixel 3XL, Google Pixel 2XL, Google, uh, the first Google XL, and Galaxy S8, S9, Note 7, and Note 5. Now, again, S8, S9 have the same uh, artboard sizes, so if I say apply. Um, okay, so the only issue with this is that it applies at the same position. So, as you can see, the S8 and S9, S9 artboard has been already added. And if I want to add more, I can add more. I can say Galaxy Note 5 and just apply this. Uh, to this so this is a pretty cool plugin if you want certain device Android devices hopefully the developer will be adding more devices these are very few devices but nevertheless they do help you uh, in you know making these um, pixel and Samsung artboards which uh, is a little bit of help of course the next plugin that we're going to talk about is bookmarks and by the way if you like this design i did a video on this uh, just this week so go ahead and check out my channel uh, if i say bookmarks um, you know it allow allows me to add labels uh, different custom bookmarks to each of my uh, so as to say artboards and for example if i want a new bookmark i'll click on this bookmark and it's already made a bookmark so if i say label I can change the label to anything so I can say home screen right and I'll say save and I'll say close so if I want to apply a bookmark I just select an artboard and say bookmarks and I add it to that bookmark so this artboard is now added to a new bookmark and for example I'm in the second artboard and I want to check out my bookmarks just go to this bookmark and it takes me to the first artboard right here so again, if I say place this here, it's in another section and I want to go to my home screen, which I've bookmarked here. I'll just go to this bookmark and it'll take me to the first screen right here. So this is a pretty cool tool. If you're working on a large, uh, you know, a large project, just set your custom bookmarks and uh, based on what category you want the screen to be in and it'll take you to that particular section itself. So you can play around with this and create some very complex uh, bookmarks or very complex positioning and it'll work out very well for you. Okay, the next plugin is called Text to Clipboard. And what this means is you can quickly copy uh, a piece of text or multiple pieces of text to the clipboard. So let's try this out. If I click on this paragraph and I go to Text to Clipboard, what it does, it Copy, uh, copies all this and it just closes it that means it's already done so if I open another you know text area I'll just paste it right here just like this and what if I want to copy two uh, clipboards or two uh, you know two sections what I do is select both of these go to text to clipboard and here and it asks me whether I want to uh, copy based on position or based on the selected order and I'll just go for position so top to bottom I'm assuming so if I say position it copies both of these texts and as you can see if I paste it here 
it's a much longer text it's actually both of these texts combined so if you want to say copy multiple text fields or text areas uh, into one this is absolutely the uh, my favorite tool to go to uh, text to clipboard and it also does based on the position or the selection so if I do selection it will just do uh, if I've selected from the bottom it will do the copy from the bottom which is pretty cool uh, and this can work for a lot of your projects especially if you're working on a bigger or a larger project Okay, so the next plugin is called Pattern Maker and it creates some awesome patterns. And I've used this in one or two videos, but I've never introduced this as a proper plugin. So let's go ahead and create some crazy shapes right here, just like this, something like this. And, um, you know, let's give this some color. So how about a red and a four, three or four pixel border. And let's create a quick pattern with this. So if I select this and I say Pattern Maker, uh, I have to either select a grid so I can select how much padding I need or just a seamless pattern maker which just places it uh, based on rows and columns. So I go ahead and say 13 by 14. Now one thing is there which you will see is that if I press OK it asks you for an odd number so, which is uh, how this really works. So I'll just do 13 by 13 and see how this cool uh, and crazy pattern is made. And you can experiment with more with this. And you know, you can even auto animate these to create some cool animations. And Pattern Maker is just absolutely the go-to if you want to create simple or complex patterns based on grids or just like a seamless, uh, uh, you know, a seamless canvas of these patterns. Okay, so the next one is called Grids Plus and Grids Plus is cool because it can uh, generate custom grids based on your requirements. Again, this is a trial version, uh, you know, you can use it seven times, but if you're using it once in an entire project, then this is pretty cool or you can just go ahead and buy the license. So I can say number of columns, how many columns do I want? Hmm. My project requires me to have 10 columns, all right? Or the side margin should be about 20 pixels. Great. And if I, now I can generate the list. Once the list is generated, I can select how, uh, select the various requirements. So um, if I want just five pixels of gutter width, then I'll have 82 pixel size of column. And this just, predefines everything for you. So if you want, if you're in the market for a good grid generator, then this is probably your go-to. There are not a lot of options. If there is, then go ahead and comment it down below. So I'll just for now, let's, let's say, uh, you know, the largest gutter, which is uh, 75. And as you can see, it's the largest gutter and it applies to the artboard. Again, this is not, these are just elements this is not the grid that adobe xd applies but it's nevertheless very cool and it defines everything for you so you don't have to adjust everything right okay so this next plugin is very important for people especially if you want to share your artboard or your share your project with somebody else but you require the image to be small for example you're sending it over email and your image, images that you've used are very heavy inside the project. So rather than exporting it and then compressing the entire artboards, there is a very good workaround for this. So there is a plugin called Image Optimizer. It's pretty straightforward. What it does is if you select an image, uh, let's just quickly export this first of all and see how heavy this image is. So if I say selected, export selected, as a PNG, let's do a PNG and let's do documents, that's for sure. Or let's do desktop for now, okay? And I say PNG, design, export. And it exports and um, let's go to my desktop real quick. And as you can see, this PNG has been exported. If I go to get info and see how heavy this is, uh, this is 516 KBs, 
which is not bad to be honest but if you're sharing a large document with multiple images this will come out to be much heavier a couple of mbs and that is something that you don't want so if i click on image optimizer it optimizes the image it basically reduces the quality of the image without you know um, causing a lot of you know you can't really make out a huge difference and neither will the user or the developer so if i go to file export and select it and i do the same settings i have png and i just change the name of course and um, i say export i go back to the folder and as you can see there are now two images uh, p two png so 22 is what we exported so if you go to get info the size here is th actually 365 kilobytes that is 200 and something kilobytes reduced which is pretty cool and i'm going to try doing this once more to show you how optimized this image can get so if i say select and i say png and i export it to desktop again with 23 as the last digit and if i go back to the folder that i was on as you can see 23 has been added and i go to get info and i bring this in the center okay so one thing that i've just noticed that it can only optimize this image more or less once so again uh it can be a huge thing for you guys i have be worked with developers myself and sometimes they ask for compressed versions of images or illustrations or styles and have to do the process of going to a website or a compressor and compressing it or go to photoshop and compressing it this is a cool tool uh, to compress it inside xd okay so this is this one is for the people who really want to adjust size of their artboard again and again and they have to like manually shift just like that or enter in digits in here there is actually a solution for that so there is a plugin called adjust size by shortcut so if i click on this uh, i can say shrink shrink width and it will shrink the width a little bit and off the artboard okay so if i bring in say a rectangle here inside the artboard and i say shrink width notice how the width will shrink by one pixel so 334 I do this, it changes to 333. If I want to shrink the height, 347, I do this, it shrinks the height. If I go ahead and do the shrink width again, it'll do it by one pixel. Often we want to change this by two or three pixels and we either have to type in minus two or whatever we want and it displays it there. But the good part about this is that there are shortcuts inside this. So if I go to the plugins on the top, and I go to adjust size by shortcut, see how the, these have been, there are shortcuts to each of these. So if I want to shrink width or shrink height uh, by one one pixel, I just do this. So this says control four, for Windows it might be different. So uh, control four and look at how the width changes. One, 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 how it changes by one one pixel. And this is pretty cool. If I go and say, control 5 it increases the height by one one pixel if i'm doing it by control 6 it increases the width by one pixel so that those are the shortcuts that you can apply and uh, if you really want to use it it'll ease your workflow by a lot and save you a lot of time uh, for doing this minus two this is much longer than just doing um, option or control for control for control for so that is another cool plugin i am sure you liked that video if you did go ahead and subscribe to my channel and also smash that bell icon because that really helps my channel grow and on the screen there are two videos which you know uh, one is suggested for you by youtube and the other one is you know just something that i want you guys to see